Here are three ways to create repeat patterns in Procreate. Option number one is the corner crop and slide. For this, you'll want to group your artwork with a background color layer and then duplicate that group four times so you have five groups total. You'll want to keep the visibility of the top group on and turn off the others. Select that group and make sure magnetics and snapping are turned on. Next, drag that group to the upper left corner and then turn on the next group and drag that one into the upper right corner. You'll want to repeat that same process for the bottom two corners, which will leave you one group at the very bottom. Slide that group all the way to the top and then toggle it down and turn off the background color. You'll see all of your artwork now and group all of your groups together and then create a duplicate of that group, which you will flatten. Now we're going to test that pattern to make sure it's seamless. So head to patternplayground.com for my free pattern testing tool. Drag that flattened pattern image into your browser. You'll want to make sure that full drop is selected at the bottom. You can rescale the pattern. You can even change the color by tapping on the blend mode option. I'm dragging the color to a mid blue color and choosing the soft light blend mode. Now I can hit save image, download, and save the image to my camera roll. The crop and slide is a wonderful option for beginners because it's fast, it's easy, and you can get great looking full drop style patterns. On the other hand, you are limited to just full drop style patterns. And because you're moving things manually, you've got that chance of human error, which can result in those really annoying white hairlines where things don't completely match up. You'll also be working with several layer groups, which can sometimes get confusing. Option number two is the quadrant slide. For this one, you'll need to set up four different selections. I'll leave a link on screen to a tutorial for that. You'll want to duplicate your grouped artwork, turn off your original, and flatten the top group. Now we're going to select selection number one, go to your wrench, add category, cut, and then paste. We're going to come back to the original artwork layer, select the second selection, same process, cut and paste. We're doing this so we have each one of these quadrants on its own layer so we can rearrange it and preview the pattern that way. Now I'm going to label each quadrant one through four so we can stay organized as we rearrange. Start by selecting number one and once again you'll want magnetics and snapping turned on. Slide that first quadrant over to the right. Then select number two and slide that one to the left. Select number three, slide it to the right, and then select number four and slide it to the left. Now we can identify parts of our pattern that we maybe need to add something or remove something. You can see I've got a gap right here, so I'm adding a swirl. Although the quadrant slide does take a little bit more work at the beginning, it does have an advantage over the crop and slide because not only can you move your quadrants left and right, you can move them up and down as well, which gives you greater flexibility for more complex looking full drop style patterns. Patterns. On the other hand, you are limited once again to just full drop style patterns. Since you're manually moving things, you still have that chance of human error where you can have misalignments and those annoying white hairlines, and it can be much more difficult or time consuming to retain your layers. Option number three is the quadrant flip. For this one, you'll want to group any of your artwork with a background color, but you won't need to duplicate your group. You'll see I have the four quadrant selections once again loaded in here. And we'll want to start by tapping on selection one, selecting it, and then hitting flip horizontal and flip vertical. Next, we'll deselect, hit the selection tool again, and now load in selection two. Select it, flip horizontal, flip vertical, and repeat the same steps for selection three and selection four. Now we can get an idea of what our artwork looks like and add any extra details that we'd like. The quadrant flip is my personal favorite, and although it does take a little time setting up those selections, once you have them, you can reuse that canvas file as a template, and then everything goes super fast after that. It allows you to create far more complex patterns, it enables you to keep all of your layers, and you avoid the risk of misalignments because you're flipping instead of manually moving anything. You could also use a similar process for half drop and half brick style patterns. So this process covers all the major most popular styles of pattern. That covers our three options for patterns in Procreate. And if you'd like to learn more, head over to procreatepatterns.com. Mm -hmm.